Hey guys, what's going on? So in the video today, I'm very excited because I have my friend Tyler here with me. And today we're going to be doing a beginners to leather work demonstration, basically. Um, we're gonna go through the various steps. I planned out five different steps that we're gonna go through that basically illustrates how anybody can do this. Anybody can get started. As long as you have the interest, you can get started with just a few tools and create some really cool things. I've only been doing this for like, I don't know, five, six months. So the point of this video is just kind of to inspire people. If you're, if you've contemplated getting into leather work, you can do it. It's very easy. You can do it with minimal equipment and you can just, just get started. That's, that's my advice. So Tyler, welcome my friend. I'm glad to have you, you on today. Yes. Thanks for having me now. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. It's funny cause uh, I actually uh, bought a little leather kit and uh, cool. I thought about getting into it. I just haven't bought the leather yet. <laughs> so, right. So right. it's good to, good to actually get some hands-on experience with it. We're going to be running through five different steps, basically. So number one, we're going to be doing leather cutting. That's what we're going to start out with. That's going to be the funnest part, probably. Strap cutting, number two. Number three, hole punching. Number four, hand stitching. And number five, rivet setting. So, yeah. so here I have <laughs> uh, just a few tools that we're going to get started with. Number one is you need a leather hammer. Hammer that you use to hit your metal tools with that won't damage the metal. And so, as you can see here, these, this is called a berry maul. I think this is a 12 ounce uh, berry maul. Um, so basically, what this is gonna do is it's gonna not damage your tools. Uh, so yeah, so that's probably number one that I would recommend. You need a good hammer. This is a this is a three pounder berry maul. I call this one Mjolnir. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> this is basically Thor's hammer. Trusty it's, hammer. Yeah. yeah. So you need a good a good hammer. I have a variety here. This one actually I got on Amazon for fairly cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, this is called from the Odin brand. Not very well known, but it's it. This surprisingly has gotten me through most of my projects fairly easily. So these are. I don't want to say they're overkill, but they're definitely, uh, you know, they're definitely more than you need to get start. More premium with. tools. Yeah, exactly. The other one here, this might look like a screwdriver, but this is actually a scratch awl. Very useful tool in leather work. Hmm. What we do with this is we uh, will score the leather, we'll mark it oh, okay. before we cut it. And also it's useful in stitching. You can use this tip. Uh, if, if your stitch punch hasn't gone all the way through, you can use that to like widen it out. Um, it's also good for just widening out any hole really that you need a little stretch. You could get that in there and sort of use a little tension and sort of stretch out some of the holes that okay. you need widened up. This is, I think it's called a compass, but basically what we use this for is we use it to score a line along the edge oh. of the leather before we start punching holes. Like a guideline? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So it'll lay a nice straight line down, a, down an edge so that you can later punch holes into it and ensure like a straight line for stitching. Okay. So that's basically what that does. This is a six millimeter hole punch. That is how I get my stitching holes because I don't have a machine. Uh, starting out, most people won't have a machine. I can't get good stitching with a machine. Like I, yeah. I prefer to by hand stitch I can do reinforcement stitching along the seams to make sure they never come undone. And you can't, like a machine won't do that, at least not to my knowledge, so. If you use a machine, do you have to use this? No. Okay, so it would just make its own holes? Yeah, exactly. Okay. The, that, that was something that I was curious about because if you're still punching holes yes. in your leather, to it's like that's double the, almost double the work. I guess right. hand stitching, that would take the, the hand stitching out. But yeah. that was something that I was curious about. If, if you use a machine, would you still have to use this? So the more you know, awesome. Exactly. If you had a stitching machine, you could you could basically do away with a lot of this stuff. So okay. it makes life easier, but in my opinion, by my estimation so far, being an amateur, you're not gonna get as secure of a stitch in as opposed to like a saddle stitch or just a standard okay. hand stitch with like loops that you can incorporate within the seams yourself to you know reinforce. And you'll see what I mean here in, in a minute. Let's see, this here, this is an absolute lifesaver. So this is a roll cutter, and this is what I use to cut my leather with. That's okay. a that's a razor, a razor sharp roll cutter. You, know, you see a lot of leather knives, and for example, I actually spent some money to get some decent leather knives, okay. and I don't use them. 
I don't use these at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why use this when you can uh, go up to the kitchen and grab a pizza cutter? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can imagine this This is uh, probably a lot more accurate than this, too. Yes, it is. So, yeah, uh, especially free-handing. Like, this, yeah. this gives you a lot more stability, I'm sure. It does. So, I'm excited to use this. It's, yeah. yeah. It looks that, like a lot of fun. Yeah, that thing is fun. Yeah, this thing here, like, to get good at free-handing, you have to be, have years of experience to be able to do it correctly. Like I see some people, they, they can do it, but I, I don't trust myself. Yeah. N not at all, not, not with a freehand knife. This here is an edge beveler. What that's gonna do is that's gonna reduce bulk along the edge of the leather as we cut. That's very useful. It's actually not 100% necessary, I've found. You don't have to bevel all your edges. It just reduces a little bit of bulk and makes it a little easier to work with as well. It'll be less stiff, it'll be less rigid. Mm. If you don't bevel the edges, it's there's just a little bit, just a tiny bit of added bulk and it just makes it a little less user-friendly, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it gives it a, a cleaner look too, kind of like uh, yes. smoothing off the, uh, the edge, especially like something, yeah. something like this rough out, like if, uh, I don't know if they would be able to see that, but <laughs> right. taking that off, it would definitely give it a lot cleaner of a look. And yes. seeing your bags, it's kind of like, yeah. yeah, that's it gives it that added oomph. Right. There's certain times where you need to reduce bulk, and that's where this comes into play as well. This is called a French Skyver. It's basically the same thing as the Edge Beveler. It's just a little wider. So sometimes, not often, but sometimes I'm in a situation where I need to where I've got three or, or even four layers of this thick four and a half ounce leather. And sometimes you need to just, you need to just shave that down. You need yeah. to get some, of, get some of that added bulk off of there so that it can all mend together properly. Cause if, if I were to stack four layers of this on top of each other, we're talking about 20 ounce, a 20 ounce thick piece. It's, it's going to be thick. Like yeah. nobody wants that. And so sometimes you just need to shave shave off some of that material to, yeah. to make it more, you know, user friendly. So totally understandable. That's a, uh, so these are the tools of the trade. Yep. These are, these are the tools. The, these are the tools that I would recommend are most crucial to get started with. Okay. I think so, my, my kit actually came with a, a cheaper hammer, kind of, kind of mm -hmm. like this, probably a little bit bigger. Um, okay. I'm not sure if it came with a, uh, guideline maker. And then scissors, big old bulky scissors. Actually, it did come come with a uh, guideline maker, but it's more of a screwdriver style. Okay. And it, it attaches different at different lengths. Oh, okay, so, I gotcha. And then also one of these and okay. a couple of different uh, hole punches. So yeah. Cool. So I, it looks like I got everything back at home that I, I would yeah. need to uh, get started. Yeah. Oh, totally. You could get started with all that stuff. Yeah. And part of the fun is, you know, I'm not gonna lie. Part of the fun is getting getting new tools, especially this thing. When this thing came in, I was like, that is, yeah, that's, a, <laughs> that's Thor's hammer right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's a piece of art right there almost. Yeah. Like, like after using this for about 15 minutes, I'm like, man, I need to yeah. switch. This is heavy. Yeah. So a couple more things that you will need are some, some leather hole punches. This one I find is, is very useful. So I've got different sizes. This is a one and a half. This is a two, but you basically want to buy a set of leather hole punches. So as you can see, we've got many different sizes. These are incredibly important. You want leather hole punches as well. So I'm looking back here. This looks, these look like hole punches. Yes. yes. So what would be the use case for this versus, I guess, a non hollow tip? Yeah. Very, very good question. I just got these in. So these are a hollow tip punch, but essentially these are both six millimeters, they're gonna create the same distance of a hole. The purpose of the hollow punch actually is like I talked about earlier, when I'm getting three and four layers of leather stitched onto one another, we want a hollow punch on maybe one of those surfaces of leather so you can get the you can get the needle in a lot easier through that third or fourth layer. Oh, okay. Yeah, with, with this punch, the holes are gonna be so tight that it's nearly impossible to get a needle through. Like, because this one's stretching, I see now. So yes. this one's removing leather and this yes. one's stretching the leather. Exactly, it. It. very, very intuitive. Yes, very very astute observation there, my my young Padawan. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked up this tool. I, I yep. remember in your in your video of, of you making the leather bags, mm -hmm. um, you were cutting angles off. So this, this yes. would just be to kind of clean up the edges. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, so so that punch specifically 
we're going to use it on a 90 degree, a sharp 90 degree edge. Mm. And we just take a hammer and just punch, punch that off and that'll create a nice curved edge. I use that when I am, when I need to create a contour in this bottom panel here. See how it's sort of contoured right here? Oh, okay. It w I wouldn't have been able to achieve that had that been a sharp 90 degree angle. Yeah. It w wouldn't have been as as graceful as a curvature here. Yeah. So. See, I'm I'm looking at the bag, and the first thing I see that use case for is something like this, this rounded yeah. off corner and yes. these rounded off corners. Yes. But I wouldn't have even thought that you would need to use it down here. But it's it's interesting that you that that's something that helps you achieve this uh, kind of rounded aspect of the bag exactly it, it's not yeah. just one tool for like this it's it's a tool that you can use throughout the bag that's cool yeah that's a good observation this this piece this panel started out as a square as a very sharp edge uh, square and i just punched those those curvatures into it and uh one one last tool that you need sorry <laughs> i did not <laughs> lots of tools <laughs> there are a lot of tools yeah there's not just five tools you probably need about 10 tools to get started <laughs> yeah and a table <laughs> and a table <laughs> yeah. space. this will punch at the tip of the strap okay. it'll, it'll punch a nice rounded. curved rounded edge okay. onto the straps so, so something like this yes this is exactly the one i used on okay. that so yeah it really gives it a nice clean look that's sort of the rundown I was hoping that this would be <laughs> like an easy five-step video, but I have a feeling it's gonna it's gonna <laughs> get a little bit more complicated. But hopefully, we uh, we can inform people and, and at least have some fun doing it. So yep. we're ready to get started with yeah. this. First step is, and this is a skill. Don't don't underestimate this step. Is we have to unroll it. This is the coolest part. Yeah, you know, unfurling it. Yes, <laughs> that is the best. Yeah, and uh, man, so, this thing is beautiful. Yeah. So what we're working with today is Seidel Oxblood Double Shot. Okay. Uh, this is basically their version of Chrome Excel, except Chrome Excel I find is has a, I think it's shrunken a little bit more. It's maybe cooked a little bit more compared to this. This has a firmer temper than Chrome Excel, um, and it smells different too. Like Chrome Excel is going to be more buttery. This is still sort of waxy to the feel. Yeah, I can feel it like uh, when you rub. A little bit yeah more tough you can you can definitely feel like that that waxy almost the oils in it coming up exactly so. yeah yeah it's still got amazing pull up like chrome excel has like you can see when you run your finger underneath you get that that pull up yeah sort of effect happening which dissipates like within minutes a lot of my friends they, they prefer the double shot to chrome excel chrome excel does it is shrunken down so it'll stretch could stretch by like up to 25 percent and it's just got a lot more uh greases and oils and waxes in it this is a lot tamer and okay. and has a lot more structure to it compared to chrome excel which again give and take has its has its pros and cons yeah i'm sure the stretch is probably going to be better for like boots and stuff wearing yes and then the, this is probably going to be better for for something a little bit more rigid like a backpack or something that doesn't have other rigidity it's just the leather which would be a backpack Yes, very, very good point. Man, you already did all the work for me. Yeah, I did all the work. See, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Panel cuts. Look what I've done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. So did you uh, did you bevel the edges? Like, um, I haven't skived, or yeah, I haven't beveled the edges on this yet. Actually, one that you can bevel the edges on when, once we get to that step. Yeah. Okay. So that'll be that'll be fun. Uh, right now, all we're doing is I already pre-cut some of these panels, so this would be a front and or back panel for my expedition pack. Okay. Um, it's a very big cut of leather, obviously. Yeah. Like, what, a foot and a half, it looks like, about? Yeah, yeah, I think that's... Foot and a half by a, a foot, or two feet by a foot? Yeah, I think that's about 13 by 23 inches, I think. Okay, so just shy. Yeah, yeah. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this down and we're gonna trace using the scratch awl. Okay. This is the scratch awl. What I like to do is I like to take a few example panels and I like to just set them down and get an idea for how I'm gonna cut this hide, right? So so here's here's some front and back panels on the on the bottom portion of the bag. Here's a side panel. Yeah, that's that's a side panel. So yeah, at this stage all we're doing is we're just sort of strategizing really. This yeah. is like like you got your your chess pieces on the board. Like what's our what's our strategy, right? Okay. You when you are kind of game planning and everything and, and cutting your leather like this, yeah. do you do you keep in mind the scars and stuff of the hide 
Very good question. Yes, I do. Um, so this mark here, this is not something that I would consider unacceptable. There are holes and there are brand marks on certain hides that I will omit from the final product of the bag just because they're, they're ugly or they're weak portions. So right now, this is not a compromised area. This is just a cosmetic scar. Uh, yeah, scar or wrinkle. Let me see. I think I saw one on, on uh, one of these panels. Uh, yeah. Right here. Yes. Which, yeah, so something like that would be cosmetic too. Yeah. Yeah. Merely cosmetic because as you can feel it, you could run your finger over it and you can feel underneath, it's not compromised. Like yeah. you, could, you could sort of tell that it's like a fully intact piece of the hide. Now I'm glad you brought this up. One way that I kind of conceptualize this, like the grain of the leather, is think of it like when you're walking through an old house like with wooden floorboards, right? You can kind of tell sometimes you step on some of the floorboards, they're kind of creaky, like you feel like you might fall through it. Right, right. Other areas, it's like fully fortified, you're not worried about it, right? That's how leather is, essentially. It will have some of those creaky floorboards in it and you just got to be mindful it'll come down to the whether it's a grade a or a grade b leather it also comes down to the tannage it comes down to the specific hide you're working with that's one thing that i have in mind is as i'm laying these panels down to mark and score you check yeah i'm, ch I'm checking to make sure that i'm not dealing with any loose floorboards <laughs> would you say uh since we're working with sidel would you say they're pretty good about sending yes yeah. sending some squared away uh <laughs> yes leather hides because it look this one itself it doesn't look like there's any of those uh creaky no creaky floorboards it, it's right there's some character but there's not a weak compromise spot yeah yeah exactly any ugly areas or any undesirable spots you can see sidel already cut yeah cut that crap off you can see in videos of the tannery they'll come through when it's ready to ship out and they'll just start slicing uh, undesirable pieces off basically 95% of what you receive is you can work with. Okay. So yeah, Seidel does a really good job. I'm really pleased with how they've, you know, working with Derek at Seidel, he's he's awesome. He's the man. Yeah, he's really hooked me up with some good hides. They're good people. They're, they're not as well known as Horween, but I'd say they kick out a product, you know, in my opinion. Comparable. Very comparable, just as good. I mean, you'll pay the same for Double Shot as you will for Chrome Excel. I'm gonna give you the responsibility. Why don't you take these and how would you position these like a puzzle piece to make most use out of like the hide as it sort of sits you know what I mean and and so that we could score those as well and cut yeah of course um yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a puzzle piece I guess because yeah because uh, you want to use the most of the hide I can imagine I could only imagine how much this hide costs yeah um what what does something like this cost the uh the actual hide itself um the so per unit now I Seidel wants you to order in sort of bulk. And so I got 20 sides. It cost me about $2,500. I want to say about $150 a, a side. Okay. I think. So yeah. a side would be this whole unit? Yes. Yes. So this is one side about, I think, 20, 22 square foot, maybe 25 square foot. Okay. And so about $150. The overall cost per square foot doesn't sound like a lot, but but yeah, I, I laid down about $2,500, $2,600 for the shipment of 20 sides. Okay. So that included shipping and everything. And would you butt, when you're typically doing this, would you butt the uh, leather pieces against each other like this? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Just gotta make sure I, I didn't wanna, wanna make sure you get the most out of your leather hide. <laughs> right. You're doing a really good job so far because when you butt the edges up against each other, what you're actually doing is you're saving yourself cuts as well. So, so like if I cut this straight edge along these two panels and it's one cut, that saves me from doing a, a additional cuts, essentially. So okay. I'm, I'm not setting these out onto the leather in a way to put distance between each cut. I want to, in order to maximize efficiency, you put them right up against each other, and that really lets you just get the most yield out of the hide. And by cutting along, like this line right here, this is really good, because through one cut, we're going to be cutting aside for one, two, three, four, five different panels okay so that's perfect right there like yeah, that's ho hopefully uh this overlap <laughs> a little bit of a uh, yeah a little off the table so hopefully i yeah i can get it going that's really well done and then so what we have here this is marble this is from a project we had upstairs these marble pieces are, are good for a couple things i like to do rivet uh setting on these because they're just so hard but also what i'm gonna be tracing 
I laid it down. So, and yeah, you want to lay these down gently. You don't want to just throw them down because <laughs> you could damage the leather. Yeah, it's scratching the leather. That would uh, probably not be good for business. <laughs> right, right. Definitely not. So yeah, so what I do is I just like to put down some marble because it, it flattens out the hide. As you can see, like certain areas of the hide want to wants to bump up and it wants to uh, yeah i saw when you place that it kind of yeah so you, you want to get it as flat as possible do you ever see yourself uh using using presses uh to cut the leather and hopefully one day yeah hopefully one day yeah I, that would be awesome <laughs> going down the the youtube rabbit hole you know i, I watch different boot making videos and stuff like that like nick's, nick's yeah. is really big into their videos and I, you just see them just like easy peasy just <laughs> yep just dink, <laughs> yep. Dink, and then they cut dink. all their pieces out and yeah it's like you know within a minute they have all the pieces for a boot right which is awesome very smooth yeah. operation there yeah. yeah so hopefully hopefully one day i'll be coming back and you'll be using a hydraulic press <laughs> oh that would be amazing my wife would be so pissed if i had a <laughs> No, had all that equipment, but yeah, <laughs> hydraulic presses aren't that expensive, especially yeah. for something that you uh, you don't need a big one for something like this. True. Well, That's, I guess yeah. you'd need a a wide space, but you wouldn't need a a heavy duty like press to cut through leather yes that's a good point that's so, right you could probably get into it pretty cheap i think that's a good idea my friend jimmy nerding with boots he, he has one for his uh, kill tees i thought he hand cut them but he doesn't all right qc is a lot easier too yes especially when you're you can dedicate a lot more time to i guess the piece of leather that you're gonna cut and then be able to cut it so i'm just gonna make sure so this is this is our starting point here okay. And so what I, all I'm doing is taking the scratch all. Okay. And some people do the whole line. I used to do the whole line, but I found that it's actually better to just do portions. So I'm doing edges. And then like every, just every so often, yeah, okay. just do a line, a guideline and see, see what it's doing. Yeah. So that's all it's doing. It's just making a little, a little score line showing where we're going to cut. And so I'm just gonna do that all around the whole side so that we know like, okay, this is sort of stamped in stone where that first panel is gonna lay. Okay. Yeah, yeah I can this uh, one. I can hit this one. Okay, sounds good. I'll set this here. I'm left-handed, so. Okay, cool. May mess this. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you recommend doing this piece too? Um, uh, this kind of... this is already done okay. basically. So yeah, I'm just I'm just leaving just enough mark so that it's clear while I'm cutting how things are gonna lay lay out. Yeah. How how do you go about the the round? Do you yeah. usually round it off? Yeah, you could round it off if you want. Yeah, yeah, you just go around the edge there. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's all you need, and that way I'll that way I'll know to punch it with the round edge punch. Yeah, because you're gonna overshoot. Oh, yeah, I, or me. You're right. <laughs> One thing that's good to have these these types of gloves on when you're working with the leather. Okay. I've found that it's good because uh, your fingernail won't scratch. <laughs> in a couple in a couple cases, rare cases, I've I've scratched uh, leather with my fingernail, and you know normally you just can buff it out. But sometimes sometimes you need to uh, you know redo that panel because you can cause damage. So that's just another precaution I've found dealing with leather. Yeah. The, surf, the surface is very delicate, so yeah, so if you want to do like this line. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start cutting. And so you're left-handed, right? I am. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Because <laughs> I wouldn't be able to, to it's tackle like you it. Plan that. Yeah, it's like Yeah, it's almost like I did. <laughs> so like all I'm doing is I'll put my hand down on this and then I'm just going to put pressure down, down. 
and just go kind of slow. Okay. And and yeah, just keep the pressure pressure straight down. It takes some practice. Yeah. And that's one thing about leather work is um, you, you want it to actually be easy. Be, you want it to be enjoyable, you know? And so sometimes that does take a little extra leg work to get everything into the right position. But as long as, and yeah, like I said, you know, it, it's, it's scary at first, but like, um, even if you make a small mistake, it's very, leather is very forgivable. Look at that. Wow. And uh, so why don't we, why don't we come yeah. Yeah, get this guy out of the way. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that helps. Right there. So I'm yeah, just gonna set that down. Yeah, th this marble is is so useful. Yeah, just having that weight. Yeah. Do we want to cut this whole panel? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then just cut right it. to here. Yeah. Seems yeah. like. Yeah. Just cut. Maybe stop just shy of this line. Okay. I'll help hold it down so you can kind of like lean into the into the roller for stability. Be my first one. Okay. Look at that. Perfect. Yeah, that Man. looks good. Separated just like that. A lot easier than the first one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot less stressful. We're almost finished cutting this panel, but before we proceeded onward, we're gonna kind of explain why the change of scenery. Tyler, um, why don't we talk about how we met first off? <laughs> well, I uh, I was watching one of your videos, and yes. uh, I'm I'm actually in a uh, a class, a photojournalism class right now, um, and I saw Dale. Yeah. I was like, man, he's got a lot of boots, and I overheard in one of his videos his location. So I <laughs> I was like, he would be a great subject for for a photojournalism video. So I came. And, oh, I messaged him on uh, Instagram, and Dale was very eager <laughs> to uh, do a video. So yeah. the video of those Leatherworks uh, concept, uh, yeah, the concept, yeah. Yes, yes. So that video was a piece that I submitted for my photojournalism course. Yes, um, probably one of my favorite pieces I've done. So yeah, that's that's kind of how we met. Yes. Dale asked if I wanted to come out again, and. Uh, do some leather working with them. Heck but yeah. in the process, we've been doing this leather working and uh, uh, I suggested <laughs> that we, the boot wall would be a great background for his yeah. videos. Uh, so and I never thought of that. The gear, yeah. I saw it click in his head and he's he's like, let's do that right now. Yeah. So so we we flipped the tables uh, a yes. little bit in the, not in the proverbial way, but. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Now we have the, uh, the boots as the background. Now we have the boot wall. Yeah. And we've got good lighting from the window and a lot more space. And so yeah, moving around, that, that was one thing I noticed was uh, moving around the table, especially two of us in here. Yeah. Um, was a little bit difficult, cramped against the wall. Yes. Uh, yes. So. So yeah, great suggestion, my friend. Hopefully, hopefully this is a uh, it'll you know increase productivity of yes. <laughs> bag making and everything. I think it will. I, I mean, it's it's a lot more opened up. It's a better use of the space and. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's wise to take other people's, you know, input into consideration, especially because, you know, I get, I get so sort of laser focused on what I'm doing and I don't start, you know, I don't think outside the box as much as I should. So this was a great suggestion. So thank you. <laughs> Dale's been kind enough to let me uh, try on some boots. So, yes. um, yes. it's one of the reasons why I was watching this YouTube. I was yeah. seeing what type of boots and everything, uh, he would, he would recommend and or sizing in particular so yeah. i got a pair of nyx mariam yeah mariam mariam uh, i have mariam tuscanella yeah. horse rump so these aren't nyx but this is the tuscanella horse rump yes. i got a pair of uh mariam tuscanella horse rump coming in and then a pair of uh baker's boots they're in the uh, bison bison leather so yeah baker's and uh white's collaboration so awesome. I'm, I'm very excited about those. Maybe maybe a little yeah. bit of influence from him for, yeah. <laughs> for pulling the trigger on those pur purchases. Right, so, right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, show the world those boots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's talking about getting his own YouTube channel started, and I think that's a fantastic idea. <laughs> I I, I want to see more boot content on the Internet, and I think anybody who's eager and willing to do it, 
hundred percent get you know get started get going and yeah. uh, it's a lot of fun it's a great way to network it's a great way to share your knowledge and uh, it's, a, it's a great way to stay engaged and, and to stay busy you know I'm stationed over in Japan so maybe uh, be able to showcase some Red Wing stores over there yes. and uh, see their different types of boots I, I love seeing uh, the different boots that are across the world especially yeah. uh, being an American company, being overseas and everything, it's it's interesting seeing those different types of boots. So definitely be able to do different things along those lines. Yeah, absolutely. And the Japanese really love American heritage workwear, yep. denim and our boots and everything. And they've done a really good job with like you know some of their some of their brands. Their Clinch, their Brass Tokyo. I'm oh yeah, Brass Tokyo. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll be going there at the end of uh, March. So. Oh. Awesome. Be able to do some awesome. video on that. Yeah. Oh man, that would be invaluable because yeah. nobody's doing stuff like that. You know yeah, I mean? it's it's very hard. You'll see some Japanese uh, uh, take part in it and everything, and yeah, and th it's in Japanese. So maybe getting right. an American over there and being able to see it, I think yeah. that could be valuable to to the uh, yes this community. Oh, so. totally, totally. That would be inc an incredible video incredible content and uh, yeah I'm happy to bring attention to it yeah I'd, I'd love to go over there and do stuff like that, <laughs> that would be like I'd love to have you over if Japan was open <laughs> oh yeah definitely that would be awesome <laughs> so yeah that's that's how we met right now I'm wearing yeah. a pair of uh the classic Iron Rangers yes um, they're a great boot the most sturdy footwear I've ever worn <laughs> yes very yes. hardy so yeah I'm excited to do maybe some comparisons on on these and the boots that I have coming in yeah, so. definitely. Anything Iron Ranger is gonna get, it's gonna get, <laughs> especially compared to something like a Truman. Um, yeah, I think yeah. I think that's the closest comparison you can do. At least right. going from a, a Truman runs anywhere from four hundred to four hundred and fifty, and the Iron Rangers I picked them up for three hundred and fifty. So I think yeah. it's a very comparable boot to the Iron Rangers. So yes, very very comparable in aesthetic and design. The Truman's just a little bit more sleek compared to the sort of the bulbous look on the on the toe there, but um I would always say it's worth it to spring the you know 50 100 dollars extra 50 to 100 bucks and get the Truman. I think it's an upgrade, but but yeah, I have a pair of Iron Rangers on the way. I can't wait to start yeah. reviewing them. Yeah, <laughs> that that's a rite of passage for boot boot reviewers and I have not Cross that rite of passage. Yeah, that is ashamedly I have to admit that because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You started from a different avenue. You started yeah. from the the more office work boot in mm -hmm. Alden. So I I, yeah. I don't think that you you missed a rite of passage just yeah. because you started with such a historical and yeah uh, very very Iconic. much deep yeah. Yeah. deep in the roots of the heritage boot boot line. That's I'd say true. almost more than the the Iron Ranger. So yeah, I mean IRs that that's a lot of guys like starting point, and I I should at some point review them, and so it's a staple in the boot world, yeah. the Iron Ranger. So he he's left handed, and I'm right handed, <laughs> and so so he's been trying to figure out which position I need to be in right for all these cuts and yeah. and I keep throwing them off yeah. <laughs> but uh, good. now we've got it pretty much uh, ironed out so he's doing a real good job with the roll cutter getting real good straight lines and uh, yeah this this roll cutter is just it's butter yeah butter it is smooth. look at that just absolutely insane yeah oh, do I have a do I have a souvenir to take home yes you do you know? <laughs> watch man fair. yeah okay, exactly. let's see Oh yeah, you could you could fashion that into a, it might be a little thick. Might be a little thick. Yeah, you might need to skive off some some of the areas. But. Yeah. Leather. Oh, there we go. Well, let's look at your work. Look at that. Man, that's all you right there. That's that's my panel. We can have you work on this one piece, and I really like this piece too because it's got a lot of character yeah i can um, see it i was gonna say something yeah uh about all the uh not scarring but just the the skin how it how it formed yeah over time the hide and everything on the cow it's it's definitely reflective yes in the uh after the tanning process which is which is awesome yes exactly it's it's really got a lot of nice striations mm -hmm. a lot of character that's gonna look really good as one of the panels on a, on a bag for sure. So for this stage, we're gonna score the lines with which to punch for which to punch the holes on. And so we have this compass here. This is a good, this is a, 
a good thing to have. But also, you can also accomplish the same thing with this thing, this edge marker here. Um, both are fully adjustable, so you can adjust. I actually eyeball the distance. Um, I think you want about maybe a quarter inch, maybe less. Yeah, it's a quarter inch, exactly. All we're gonna do is, so this is, there's two sides to this. There's the scoring side and there's the- oh, the, the guide? The, yeah, the guide side, exactly. Okay. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna take it, set the guide down, and I like to, some people come down like this to do it. I actually prefer to do it like this. I get the most control that way because okay. the guide is most stable that way. Okay. And so all I'm doing is scoring. You could do it with either or. I actually prefer the compass. But either way, you could use one or the other, but yeah, either way, I think I think the best technique is to come top down. Okay. And that's that's what I do. So we'll do all four corners and you could use whatever tool you want. Yeah, so both are set to exactly a quarter inch, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter which one. There you go. There Slow go. steady wins the race. Look at that. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so perfectly done. So next step is we're gonna punch the holes. Actually, where's Mjolnir? Did you move it? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Comes when you call him, that's a good hammer, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you gotta be worthy. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take the, uh, the leather hole puncher. We're gonna just set it down on the line and there's nothing to it. We just, uh, depending on the weight of the hammer with Mjolnir, all I need to do is just a single- Drop the weight. Yeah. And I just I just come along and uh, with so how I do it is with my left hand I hold the I hold the punch and on my right hand I hold the old near and uh, yeah so it you know that kind of streamlines it so I can just go down the line so one thing is as I'm doing the the punch I'm I'm sort of I'm lay, I'm laying it down but I'm sort of digging in a little bit here okay, to to create a uh kind of that indent so you don't move it. Yeah, exactly. So for you, you might want to take it with your right hand and hammer it down with your left. So there you go. Let's see. Oh, that's it. It's in there. Yeah, you could tell if it went through by looking on the other side. Okay. Definitely went through. Awesome. So yeah, this is, once again, this is a Barry Mall, very high quality. Yeah, the, uh, Mjolnir is a little smoother. So. Yeah, Mjolnir is smooth. Because <laughs> the weight, yeah. the weight doesn't, like, there's no particular weight, uh, there's no particular, uh, I guess, balance to it. Yeah. Like, like with a, a standard hammer, you kind of have, like, the heavy side, and then you have yes. the, the off side. Yes, and yes. I'm, I'm, can I give him a try? Yeah, yeah, give Mjolnir a try. I think this is called a maul, a leather maul, and that's called a mallet. Mjolnir yeah, that one is a little, yeah, a little easier. Yeah, Mjolnir is the, uh, <laughs> he's the king. Nice. Yeah, and there's di obviously different hammering techniques. I like the one and done. I like to punch it through and be done with it. Be done. Some people will do a set hit, just to set it, mm -hmm. and then drive it through with the second hit. So they'll do. But again, I like taking the heavier mallet and driving it all the way through in one. If, if you're accurate enough, it's, I find that it's more efficient. The guideline really helps. Yeah, keeps it straight. And, and the best way to tell if you've gone all the way through is uh, just turn it over. And, and if you're iffy, like here, it looks kind of light. But if you open it up, open it up, you, you can see yeah. that, yeah, it went all the way through. And I can see that's probably where the, uh, the hole punches with the actual holes in them yeah. uh, that actually remove leather. That's probably where they benefit. Yes. Because you can actually see and you can 
you're creating a hole in it. Exactly, yeah, you could see through to the other side. All right, so I just realized that I didn't actually teach him how to sew, how to start stitching. So I'm gonna do a quick demo of how I lace the thread through the needle. It's very simple. So I'm just gonna get that through the loop. And then, very simple, I take the tip and I take about half inch into the thread there. I'm gonna take that and I'm going to insert the needle head through the thread. It's gonna create a loop. All right, so it's gonna look like this. All I'm doing at this point, I'm just gonna pull that down. It'll look something like that. Don't tighten it all the way. It'll look something like this, all right. And then take double the length, two and a half times the amount. I just sort of eyeball it. What we're gonna do is to get it started. So these two pieces, the holes, stitch holes are already punched. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, we're creating a blind, a blind seam, meaning once it's stitched together, it's gonna look like this. See how you can't see the stitching? It's like, I call that a blind seam. I don't know if that's the technical term. If somebody knows the real, yeah, you could, when you separate it, you could kind of see it, the stitches in there, but they're inverted. So maybe it's called an in inverted seam. I'm not sure. So anyways, how we get it started is, so I'm going to come through the first hole, line up the first holes, pull that through. All right. Then all I'm going to do from here, I'm basically going to do the same thing that I did to get the needle started. I'm going to poke it through and pull it. There we go. Now we got it started. So now I'm going to start going down the line. And what I do is actually get gloves because it allows me to handle the needle better. So one thing that I do to sort of save time is I poke it through two holes instead of one, and then I pull from there. And so that sort of saves time in terms of pulling. Okay, so I can pull that all the way through. So there's two threads. And then what I do, I don't know what you call this, a loop stitch, a chain stitch, but I actually, to reinfer, reinforce my seams, and this is the advantage that I get by hand stitching, is I do a loop here. So every four going out, every four I do a loop stitch, and then every four coming back I do a loop stitch. So in other words, every other stitch hole has a loop stitch supporting it in place. And so I'll show you what that will look like. All right, so here's here's the finished product. Here's what it looks like when it's all done. So as you can see, the loop stitch is every other stitch. This is the method that I've developed that I find gives the most support to the seams. That way these seams aren't just stitched together. They're super duper reinforced. Think of it like in fence posts. Like I think every five or ten fence posts, you want them to be uh, cemented in with an anchor point. And that's basically what this is doing, except it's every other one. It's probably overkill. Now, if I were to compare that to my initial leather bag and brown chrome Excel, I could tell that they used a machine on this, meaning that there won't be those loop stitches or those chain stitches on the inside. So this is just, these are just normal stitches going through, right? Not a bad thing. I mean, that's, that's how a lot of bag makers do it. There, there's no problem in that. But when you're doing it by hand, you can afford to take you can afford to take some liberties and really, really reinforce, as you can see here. So you're just going down the line. Um, some people do what's called a saddle stitch. They have two needles going at once, and they crisscross. I'm not that skilled. I'm not an expert. I'm just getting started anyway. So don't uh, take my advice with a grain of salt. But anyways, yeah. So that's that's how I get the that's how I get the stitching going.
So this is not mandatory, but this is what a lot of experts do. What they'll do is they'll take this edge beveler here and they're gonna go along the edges so that when you're meeting other edges up with it, it reduces bulk and it, it allows these edges, if they're coming, if they're conjoining at a 90 degree angle, say, if they're beveled off, they, they come together a lot better, a lot smoother. And so there's nothing to this. You just, um, you start at the edge and you just kind of hold it at a 45 degree angle and you just keep your finger on the, the tip there and just push it, push it forward. And okay. what, what you'll get is a nice piece of spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to do all four, four edges, There's certain areas, if, if you run into an area of loose grain though, it might not skive off nicely, but it looks like we've got a lot of tight grain on this one, so. Yeah, it's definitely a very good piece of leather. I was telling Dale uh, during our video, during the video that I made of him, I was yes. telling him uh, that he needs to capitalize on all these, uh, these sounds. The yeah. ASMR aspect of it. <laughs> So one, one thing that you want to keep in mind, sorry, this is totally like turning into a super complicated video. If the beveler is starting to dull out, which it can easily, one thing you can do is I always have sandpaper handy. This is a really fine grit sandpaper. I'm not sure. 800, there might be some burrs and we just, yep, that's all you're, that's really all you need to do. Sometimes I'll take it and I'll bend it and I'll, I'll get it in here. Like okay. This. Oh, uh, okay. Get it nice and sharp. Yeah. So I'll do that and then, uh... All right, give that a shot. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Final piece. Yes. that edge was a little uh, loose a little loose, loose yeah compared to the rest of the uh, the sides yeah that's part that's part of the problem with some of it is it's like yeah if, if you're running into loose grain it's very difficult to bevel properly so yeah look at all that and this doesn't look like a lot of material but it is it makes a huge difference uh, when it comes to assembling the bag so it's it's just a good discipline to be in not completely mandatory but, yeah um this is a french skyver it's basically a similar thing to the edge beveler but um what this will do like i i made a bag once the leather the the leather was i think seven and a half ounces okay it's very thick and so i needed to i needed to shave off some of along the stitch lines oh, okay so that when they came together and so yeah all, all i'm doing here is th this part is kind of tricky but it, it's it's more so in, in the feel. All I'm doing is just going along the stitch lines that, that you made oh, okay. and just taking just... So, so full disclosure, you could go through the leather and damage it. And so that's why I angle it back like this and I just apply just a little bit of pressure and see how well it's cutting because depending on how sharp it is, it may or may not take a lot of material off. And so... So yeah, but this will make the edges come together a lot easier, make stitching easier, and you can kind of eyeball it. Like, you know, I just, I didn't shave a lot of material off, but it's, it's enough to make the edges come together a lot better. Yeah. So yeah, so if you wanted to do a side with that, I think skiving is a very useful skill uh, when it comes to leather work. You, you will run into situations where you need to use a skiver just because sometimes when you're marrying up edges that are really bulky then it's it's a good skill to have in your toolkit <laughs> yeah it's it's you could think of it like shaving your face like just yeah shaving just your... a little layer off yeah yeah i think my biggest fear is uh, going through your leather yeah yeah and and don't worry about it like th there's there's always a way to remedy 
in 99% of cases, if you do mess something up, there's, there's a way to remedy it. I would, so it, like, let's say hypothetically, if you did go through the letter, what I would do is I just shave, I just cut the whole piece off, start, start fresh from it with a new edge. Mm. And uh, I would just shorten all the other panels and mm. maybe compensate on another panel, lengthen it up so that it, it, you know, the dimensions are all still there. There's, there's always a way around it. I'd rather not have, have, yeah. have you do that. <laughs> definitely. But yeah, definitely something to consider. I'd, I'd want to practice uh, on my own time before I started any projects. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, but yeah, you can go fast with it as long as you go light. Yeah. But yeah, skiving is, it's its own art. It, and it's, I just wanted to sort of introduce you yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. For the next portion, we're going to be doing a strap cutting. And we were just remarking about the waxy bloom that Chrome Excel forms. All these waxes come to the surface and it looks kind of gross or, you know, kind of off, off putting at first. But all you really need to do is take a brush and it really like reabsorbs and, and buffs out really instantly and really yeah. nicely. Like you kind of see the difference between the two. Yeah. It's kind of insane how just buffing it out a little bit brings that life back to the Chrome XL. Yeah, you can see here to here, nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's night and day. We'll cut some straps out of this. And so what we're gonna use for this, this is one of the most important tools you'll have. It's called a strap cutter. Okay, I don't think this and, came in my kit. <laughs> oh, okay, I have a couple of them. I had to order them separate, but really it looks kind of intimidating at first. So there's a razor blade in there and all we're gonna do is, so we'll do a five eighths of an inch width strap. That's the strap that I find to be most useful for most applications. So yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'll loosen it, bring it, bring it to five eighths of an mm -hmm. inch we want to make sure these two oh, are okay. separated so that the letter can feed through it just right. That's what. Yeah, and then I sort of tighten it up a little bit. A little more, a little more, set it, a little more. It's, it's okay. just a process of like playing with it, I guess. <laughs> so. And then a safety razor in there. That's yeah. simple. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Which is awesome. Like you don't, it's kind of like a testament. I'm sure this tool is probably like $15. Something, yep. something along the lines of that yes but like yes my kit which came with most of this stuff was like thirty dollars and yeah and you get a couple of tools you could be total investment a hundred dollars into like leather making and stuff yeah so yeah. other than the leather and right. the, the man hours and stuff exactly it's interesting that you can just be in for such a low price yeah and this is a really useful tool um i want to say i got it for like 20 bucks but yeah to get started we just got this standard piece of brown chrome excel and i'll show you how to do it like um okay. so you can use a strap cutter to make belts to make you know I, I used a strap cutter to make all the everything on this on this thing all the straps and everything there's really nothing to it so yeah all we're gonna do is just gonna feed the leather in and then, so the, the only thing you gotta be mindful of is you wanna keep this, the, ed, the straight edge of the leather up against this, this. Oh, okay. As you're feeding it through, because if you just were to grab this and pull it. It would go all haywire. Yeah, you could derail it and it wouldn't, it wouldn't come out well. So, so Towards I- Towards the end. Yeah. Okay. So I find the best approach is to feed it I, I do both. So like I'll pull it and then I'll push it and then I'll pull it and then I'll push it <laughs> depending on it's, it's all by feel. But, um, since this isn't going to be used for anything and we're going to yeah. be doing riveting next, yes. uh, would yes. I be able to make this a little wider? Maybe yeah. do like kind of like a, like a keychain loop. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you want. The ball is in your court. We'll probably do three quarters of an inch, just a little bit yeah. wider, just to Give it that nice little... Three quarters is good. I use three quarters for my uh, carry handles Okay. on my bags. A little souvenir or something. Yeah, exactly. It's always good to, to walk away with a little little something <laughs> extra. <laughs> so now we're at three quarters of an inch. Yep. You know, so yep. we can uh, kind of make a keychain yes. holder. Just a little bit bigger than the one that Dale did. Yeah. But I think it would be cool if, uh, you know, a Horween yeah. keychain. After we do the 
the riveting, of course. That would be sweet. So, yes, totally. What I'm thinking is something along the lines of that. Oh, yeah. And then uh, maybe even one day along the yeah. along the, the way, maybe put my name in there or something. Oh, like that. man, yeah. that's a good idea. This is a good a good opportunity to use the edge punches to make yeah. it, make it uh, round it off. So would you want it this long or would you want it like a little... Yeah, that's a good. That's a good length, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I've never made a key keychain holder before, so this will be fun. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so now I guess we're gonna combine all of the, the le learning, <laughs> learning that I did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, one at a time. You can use whatever hammer you want. Mjolnir is Mjolnir, of always course. my top choice. <laughs> With something like that, you just want to make sure it's straight. Look at that. Good. Wow. First try. Yeah. Zero instruction, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> He's a natural. <laughs> it's after the video, you know, I, I yeah. saw the, the expertise and I was like, yes, man. like a sponge. Exactly. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is like a key ring uh -huh. right here to con connect and then uh, maybe eventually use my wife's cricket and put yeah. my name in there. W would you want two rivets or you just want one up here or we could do two i think two would be good um yeah one right here yes and one right here and then yeah, yeah. that's what i would recommend as well give it some structure definitely okay that perfect looks good. yes it does this is where these uh these self-healing cutting mats um are come become useful okay is uh so i'll set this down i'll make sure it's straight and so for the first rivet i'm just gonna sort of eyeball it it's gonna be about a half inch in and uh, just make sure you set it kind of in the middle there and you, you can eyeball that okay. and so next comes the hardware you can take copper or brass and I you could uh, that's a toss-up yeah and you could take thin so so these are i think 15s. These are both 15s, I think. Okay. Um, it's kind of confusing because the lower you go, the bigger it becomes. So, so these are 15s. These are the small ones. This is, this is I think a 12, and this is a nine. So the nine is going to be the thickest. The 12 is is going to be good. It just depends on if you want copper or if you want brass. Let's do. Let's do. Uh, we'll do. What is that? Copper? Yeah. Yeah, copper. That's a copper number 12. That is actually exactly what I was going to recommend. <laughs> so for the rivet today, we're going to punch the hole first. So this is going to be a number two hole punch. See that? So. Okay. Oh, for the hole punch, this will be your first hole punch and rivet. For the hole punch, I wouldn't recommend Mjolnir. I would actually re recommend the little guy. Okay. And so all we're going to do is... Um, so all we're going to do is there's nothing to hole punching. You just set it down. So in, in this case, you're going to set it down on, on your indent there, right? And uh, all we do is just very, it's very a very gentle hit. And it goes all the way through and it forms wow. that hole. It's a big hole, compared, especially compared to the other one. Yes, exactly. And this hole, th that number two, I picked it specifically, it will tightly fit okay. the rivet through. So I would recommend, yeah, picking just the one side and punching holes on both. Yeah, using the soft edge. It's just a gentle tap and it just goes right through. Yeah, that just sinks. Yeah, beautiful. Tearing up your self-healing oh, mat. That's okay. The self-healing mat actually does not self-heal very <laughs> easily. <laughs> But it's also necessary because you would tear up this wood. Yeah. <laughs> and then the wood would scratch the leather, and we don't want that. So, so would you recommend doing the the uh, holes through? Yeah, we could do it that way. Or yeah. uh, would you recommend this? Which one would you do it? How would you do it? So the way I would do it, and you could do it your way because it looks like you have these even already. But just to, just to be safe, so I just I line those edges up. And then I just mark here and mark here. All right. And uh, do it from this side? Yeah, so if you want to do it from that side, that is also a good move. And then we can see if my uh, my initial 
markings are, are correct. Yeah. That's all she wrote. So we have our holes. Let's see if they line up. Yeah. Wow. All right. Good work. Now on, so I, I got some hole punching done. Some, yep. Some cutting done. Now we got to uh, do the, the rivets. Yes. The fun part. Yes, the fun part is the rivets. And I was going to ask you, did you want leather washers on that? That'd be, yeah, I think that would add to the character of it. Awesome. I think, I think it would add a nice touch. And uh, we could stamp it out of this piece of brown Horween Chrome XL scrap. So yeah. we're gonna go with a, so these will be half inch. Do we have any burgundy strap, or uh, not burgundy, the uh, the Sido? Yeah. I think that would be, uh, I think the, the color difference, the contrast. Ooh. So one thing with the washers that I recommend doing is, so we're, we'll take this hole punch, and so we'll just come along these edges here, mm -hmm. edges that would probably otherwise be discarded like this piece here. Definitely. And so all we do is we just, I like to come from the rough outside. You don't, you could do it from the smooth side too, but I like to do it from the rough outside because it sits more securely. Yeah, so all we're gonna do is we just set it down. And yeah, if you wanna take Mjolnir and you just, just one punch, just, look at that. For the scrap, I punch out all the washers I can get out of it. Would you recommend doing washers on both sides or just, just the one? Um, good question. Uh, I just do it on the one side. Okay. But it really comes down to your preference. And, you know, sometimes I'm in a situation where there's already three or four layers of leather together. There's no need for a washer in that case. Yeah. But when it's two, just two layers, it's not necessary. Uh, I would recommend using a washer. So we got our washers, our yes. rivet, yes. and our band. So now we can... Uh... We can put all this together. Let's do it. All right, why don't you take the lead there? So all we're doing first is we're going to feed the rivet through its corresponding holes. All right. So we're gonna go this one? Yeah. Oh, nice and snug. Yep, good and snug, that's what you want. This one? Might be a little difficult, but that's what you want it to be a little hard. I believe in making every single layer as secured as possible. I think that's that's the best. So to show show the camera, washer securing the end and then the band yes. bound together by the rivet. Perfect. So, Looks good. Yep. Yeah. Oh there we go. Yep. Okay. This is cool. It before the rivets. Yes. And kinda what I'm thinking is just a, a key key ring right here. Yes. And then just you know, some some Horween leather to uh, to hold up, hold around. Keep with me. Yes. All right. Definitely. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set it down on this marble here. We're gonna take our rivet heads. Okay. And yep, absolutely. So just set that down. Yep, exactly. And then so what we're gonna do? So this will be the setter tool. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna set this down. Okay. And we're just gonna hammer it down. Awesome. Um, it'll create a perfect, perfectly secured rivet. Um, you could use whatever hammer. I would actually recommend tapping it down gradually with the small guy, okay. with the small one. Yeah. You can come down a little harder on it. There you go. That's, that's good. That's good get pressure. A, oh, no, that, that looks good. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So uh, where looks do we great. go from now, or from, from here? Yeah, so from here we're gonna cut the excess off. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna set it down, and we're gonna come here, and there's there's a technique to it. So so you wanna you wanna squeeze and then turn it 90 degrees, squeeze again. Okay, to give it that kind of X uh, or that cross. Yeah. Okay. To make it come off easier. Oh, okay. Um, you could cut all the way through. The, my technique is I come all the way down to the rivet head. Yeah. I used to leave a little excess, but these these clippers are designed for riveting specifically, so you can come all the way down to the rivet head and just and just squeeze that thing off. All right. Good. Perfect. Look at that. Let's see. Good. That's it. That's all she wrote. Awesome. Almost a finished keychain. Yep. Hopefully I can, when I get home, be able to uh, put my name on it. Yeah. Now we just take this, 
this center. Okay. And so you could kind of feel the roughness. Yeah. Yeah. That, that that'll cut that can cut your skin and that can damage your like your pants and stuff whatever it comes in contact with. So what you want is this. What I'm going to do with this, you could really take any hammer for this. This is going to smooth out the tip. Okay. And so I just come down. You can you can whack it a few times and it wow. really smooths it smooths it off. Yeah, that's awesome. So that'll get it into much better shape. That Perfect. Is a nice little key holder. Yes. Great little key fob. Yep. Great little keychain for you. Look it's, at that. <laughs> that's leather making. Yeah, exactly. Tyler, thanks again. This has been our intro to leather working. Uh, hopefully you learned a thing or two. Okay. Um, yeah, and ho hopefully you found it enjoyable because I find it very enjoyable to just do this all day long. <laughs> no, I, I definitely found it enjoyable. It's been a pleasure cool, being able cool. to work with you and everything. And Awesome. And, and hang out in, in yeah. the workshop. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, man. It's It's been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed, you know, every step of the way. I think we put some great projects together. And I'm excited for this because I think uh, in addition to, you know, you kind of just getting an intro into leather work, hopefully we can share this and inspire some other people Definitely. along the way. And actually, I have a small token <laughs> of appreciation. Yeah, for, for everything that you've done, I had a small, uh, a small, <laughs> a small gift to pass on this to you. This is a small gift. Yeah, that's a really small gift, though. <laughs> so, Dale. Ho hopefully you like it. I know you mentioned a few things to me about, like, what you were looking for. Ho hopefully you get some use out um, of it. <laughs> I hope, at least. I... Oh, man. Take a gander at that bad boy. So, a little backstory. I... <laughs> I really, I love Dale's products, and uh, and I, I told him I, I was interested in a bag, but uh, I also have a baby on the way, so. Yeah. yeah. Dale, you. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> Absolutely, man. my man. My pleasure, my pleasure. Hey, you know, you got you got a baby on the way, and uh, you know, you need, you need something to carry diapers around. <laughs> it's gonna get a lot of use. Um, cool. I do a lot of traveling through yeah. work so yes so i i'm eager to get you some some pictures back of it oh <laughs> you know, definitely i'd love hopefully that. underneath the uh, tokyo tower at brass tokyo so yeah stuff yeah stuff like that exactly so, yeah no I, yeah so so this is this is a scout this is yeah. um a, a prototype i actually designed the straps to be a little bit easier to install yeah um so as you can see here they're they're super riveted down and but it, it should be easier on your back to get on and off. Yeah. I also positioned the adjuster straps down here okay. on the back. And so hopefully, hopefully this will be a good like heritage piece for you. So this is perfect. Uh, cool. Cool. Awesome. You, you, your work is great. I, I love it. Oh, thanks. I love what you do here, so. Man, thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, my man. I hope it's what you were looking for. Um, this is going to be in Seidel's British tan double shot. Okay. Um, but actually, this outer compartment is brown chrome excel. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Which is pretty funny, because yeah. my keychain is about the same. Yeah. It's got the uh, the brown chrome XL, so yeah. that matches, and then it has the, the rivets that are that are the uh Seidel yeah exactly double shot uh ox blood so that's yes. awesome yes and i know that you said that you don't like the top heaviness of the bag yeah as much so i did a little something special for you i created a cinch um, oh, wow. system inside yeah, kinda. this gave me a, an opportunity you know when somebody expresses like something that they want like I decided to, you know, sort of take that and and run with it. So this gave me a, a chance to try out setting grommets. Yeah, no, I know. I know. I remember us talking about that with the uh, other bag. I think it was a coach bag. And yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Exactly. So I designed this cinch system. It might be difficult to to operate because it is uh, such a thick leather. But I I built everything in it essentially out of from scratch yeah and so i hope i did a good job we've no, got this little <laughs> got this little shifter here and it's you know so so in other words like how it'll work is you can pull this and uh you know it, it might 
it might take some breaking in because yeah. this is such a firm temper leather. Yeah. It, it'll need to be broken in, but yeah, you can cinch that down and then close that up. Yeah, and then, and then it also gives the opportunity for more room by uncinching. So yes, that's exactly. awesome. Dale, yes. Yeah. Like always, you, your your work is just phenomenal. So Man, thank you, thank you. Again, I I really appreciate it. Yeah, this totally. It's beautiful. Man, I hope I hope you get some. Uh, some good use out of it and I hope uh traveling around Japan I'm sure there will be people that will like be okay. asking you questions yeah. about it and stuff and Definitely. you know and yeah so any any pictures you get of it yeah feel free to shoot it my way out. I'd love to see this thing in the wild yeah you know take it to brass Tokyo take it to the denim district and you know yeah. carry all your stuff in there and yeah like it you got a baby on the way you're gonna need to carry diapers and wipes and <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so hopefully hopefully it serves you well, my friend. I hope, uh, you know, I, I feel like that's the least I can do for all the work you've done for me. So <laughs> take that as a token of my appreciation, Thank my man. I, I really appreciate it. Heck yes. Man. Yeah, so so hopefully hopefully you'll be making some yourself one day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, this has been a lot, a lot of fun, a great adventure, and uh, special thanks to Tyler for everything he's done for me. Please leave me your thoughts in the comments below, and you can follow me on Instagram. My username is AerosurferLV, and I'll see you all in my next video. <laughs>